sports fans and baseball fans. Got another Stratomatic game for you. Uh, it's another one from, uh, you know, two teams from two different eras. And this time, it's the very famous 1919 Black Sox, 1919 Chicago White Sox team. Going up against the 1982 Detroit Tigers. And uh, both teams were were pretty good. I think they won in the 80s, both of them. Uh, the White Sox, I think, won 88 games. They won the American League with 88 wins. And uh, 88 or 89. And, um, and Detroit was also in the 80s. They were a pretty good team. Uh, I will be, of course, taking the 1919 White Sox. And, of course, if you know the le the uh, history of me doing these games, I always end up losing. The team that I take loses. So we'll see if that trend continues. Because I can't remember when I won. Um, but leave it in the comments if you remember one where, where I won, where I did a game like this. Um, I will be sending Lefty Williams up to the mound, uh, not Seacott. I mean, he's the most famous pitcher from that um, team, I think. But I'm going to send up Lefty Williams. And the computer is going to go with Milt Wilcox of the 1982 uh, Detroit Tigers. My line, lineup is going to be Nemo Liebold and right, Eddie Collins at second, Buck Weaver at third, Shoeless Joe Jackson in left, Happy Felsch in center, Chick Gandal at first, Swede Reisberg at short, um, Ray Schalk at catcher, and Shane O'Collins as the DH. And we are going with the DH because we are in Detroit, and uh, Detroit was in the American League, and in 1982, the American League used the DH. So the the uh, Detroit lineup is going to be Lou Whitaker, sweet Lou Whitaker at second, Glenn Wilson in center, who had a hell of an arm, Larry Herndon in left, Larry Parrish at catcher, Mike Ivey at DH, Enos Cabell at first, Chet Lemon in right, Tom Brookins at third, and Alan Trammell, the the uh, famous other famous part of that double play combination with Lou Whitaker. So let's get on with this game. There's no more, you know, we don't want to <laughs> delay it any longer. And it's actually this is great because it's actually in Tiger Stadium. So. Uh, I don't know if they still played in Tiger Stadium in 1982. I suspect maybe they did. But anyway, you got Nemo Liebold going up against Milt Wilcox. And Wilcox deals, and it looks like that's going to be an out. That's got out written all over. Fly out to, to uh, Wilson in center. Eddie Collins, great hitter. Um, college educated guy was not part of the Black Sox scandal and he will fly out and that brings up Buck Weaver and Buck Weaver always I mean, famously claimed that he was not part of the Black Sox scandal and as evidence of that, he used his World Series statistics to show that he was not tanking, but uh, he was still nevertheless lumped in with that group of people. So Lefty Williams dealing to Sweet Lou Whitaker, bottom of the first. And it looks like he's going to ground out to Gandal, and Glenn Wilson is up. There's Glenn, the picture of Glenn Wilson with the Phillies, which is where I remember him. Uh, the dude in Stratomatic, the dude had a negative five arm. In fact, he probably does still have one, even in this version of the game. We'll see. Uh, I'll have to keep that in mind if I ever get a chance to run on Wilson. And uh, Larry Herndon up at the plate, two down. Lefty Williams having a looks like a pretty easy first inning. And he does, and that brings up Shoeless Joe, Shoeless Joe Jackson, who was also part of the scandal, the 1919 Black Sox scandal. And he, no, he's going to fly out to Wilson, it looks like. Happy Felsch, 
the center fielder. And he is going to fly out to Wilson. There's a two down really quickly again here in the... No, he doubled. He How did that happen? Oh, he dropped it. Glenn Wilson dropped it? Man, that's crazy. All right, well, Chick Gandal is up at the plate, and hopefully he's not taking money to, to tank the game. And that's two down and Swede Reisberg, who also was one of the eight men out. And he looks like he's going to ground out to Brookins, but that is Brookins. And he does make the play. So Lance Parrish up to hit against lefty Williams, who also himself, again, was part of the Black Sox scandal and apparently took money to throw the game. And according to the movie, was prepared in his final start in the World Series to actually try and be on the level, but the gangsters got to him and uh, told him that they would uh, do some unsavory things if he... Uh... And did Mike Ivey hit a home run? Oh, my God. He is Cabell. One out. The Tigers are on the board with uh, a Mike Ivey home. And he's going to ground to Swede Reisberg. Now, one thing I do have in my, not in my favor, is that there were a lot more errors committed in 1919 than in 1982. Because the gloves and equipment were a lot different. So while the guys might have good range, you'll see they'll have, they are worse defensively. For instance, Reisberg with 40-something errors. He's a shortstop 2E 40-something. But Trammell's a shortstop 1E17. So anyway, Ray Schalk is up. Now, Ray Schalk was not part of the 1919 Black Sox scandal, and you're going to hear me talk about that until, you know, we've covered all the bases with all of those guys. Did he get a base hit? He did. So an infield hit for Schalk with Shano Collins up. Big Shane O'Connor, and he is going to ground out to shortstop, probably a double play. Yeah. And that brings up Liebel. So I'm down one nothing here. That's not insurmountable, but if they score a couple more, we're going to be in trouble. Liebold, what's he got there? No. It's a no. Oh, no, it's a double. It's a double. Okay, he doubled. All right, uh, Collins, we really need Collins and his good batting average to knock Liebel home here. And is that going to do it? And no, it does not. So we're still down one nothing. bottom of the third. Tom Brookins up. Don't expect much from him, but we'll see. I mean, you can see, um, you know, as we look at um, right now on the screen, if you're looking at the pitching card for... Lefty Williams, he only really allows people on the two or in the five column, so in the middle column. If you hit any of those other two columns, you're looking at yeah, that's, But that's a base for hit. Alan Trammell. So he's aboard with his uh, double play partner, Lou Whitaker, up. That should be a double play. No. No, they went the. Uh, they didn't have a chance at the double play, so they did the fielder's choice. There's two down, with Glenn Wilson up, and he's going to ground out to Collins. So we've got Buck Weaver at the plate. Buck Weaver, not a bad card. Wilcox is really on top of his game. That's going to be a ground out whipper. It looks like, and it is. Joe Jackson, Shoeless Joe. And Shoeless Joe is going to probably fly out to left. Two down and Happy Felsch is up. And he's out. Oh no, not yet, but he will be. No, he's, no, he's, what, what happened there? Felsch will take, yeah, he walked him. All right, so, Felsch aboard, two down, Gandal up. 
the one thing, and also the thing that doesn't play into my favor, is that the White Sox did not have a lot of power. You're going to have to score with doubles and singles, not home runs. And i got to send the lead runner, because who knows if I'm ever going to get a chance to do this again. I'm going to even send the trailing runner. And it worked, and Gandals at third, and we tied the game up. Swede Riseberg with Gandal just 90 feet away. And that looks like it's going to be a fly out to Wilson if he doesn't drop this like he dropped the other. And he doesn't. But the gamble paid off, and we tied game at one with Lefty Williams dealing to Larry Herndon in the bottom of the fourth. Leading off the bottom of the fourth. Looks like a ground out to Weaver, and it is. Lance Parrish is up. Lance Parrish looks like he's going to fly out to Felsch, maybe, unless it drops in front of Felsch. No, he got it. And that brings up Mike Ivey, the man who hit the home run that is responsible for the fact that we're locked at one right now. And he got a hit there. Mike Ivey, two for two. And Enos Cabell up at the plate. Enos Cabell is going to fly out to Jackson, it looks like. Yep, that's it for the Tigers. Milt Wilcox goes back to work against Schalk here in the top of the fifth. Both pitchers have, a pretty, I would imagine, pretty good stamina. So as long as they don't um, start to just get into trouble with their stuff, I would expect both to go seven plus. Shano Collins with a base hit, the DH today. So he's aboard with one out and Liebold up. Nemo Liebold. And Nemo Liebold might have a double. You think he might have a double there? Yes, he does. And, you know, I'm going to send the runner. It's 14. I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold the trailing runner. And he did score, so it did pay off. And Eddie Collins is up with a man at second and only one out. So, so far, my decisions are paying off instead of, you know, hurting me like they do in these games when I usually manage the team. Buck Weaver is up with one down. Runners had first and second. Wilcox in a little bit of trouble, and he continues to be. And I am going to send the runner. And he scores, so we're up 3-1. Joe Jackson at the plate. You wonder if they're going to come get Wilcox, but no, they don't. And Joe Jackson is going to hit into a double play. So we did, but we did get two. And two. We take a 3-1 lead with Lefty Williams dealing to Chet Lemon, leading off the bottom of the fifth. And he strikes, strikes out Lemon. Of course, Lemon was also on the White Sox in his early days. Tom Brownkins. And Tom Brookins is going to make an error, or get on by an error. Tom Brookins gets on by an error with Trammell up and one down. So Weaver made an error on that play. And there's a hit to Liebold and right, but he's a good fielder. No, no, it falls in front of him. They have runners at the corners with one out. Whitaker up. Lefty on lefty. Literally, lefty will. And he looks like he lined out to Collins, so there's two down with Glenn Wilson up. And Glenn Wilson looks like he's going to be either homering or doubling into the corner. I am going to stop the runners. And he ties the game at three. Larry Herndon up. And Larry Herndon looks like he's going to fly out to Jackson to end the threat, but Detroit does tie the game. So we got a good one here. And so Wilcox is still out there given new life by the two runs that his uh, lineup got for him. Happy Felsch up. So far, I haven't made any devastating decisions that have cost my team, so I'm glad to see that. Uh, Felsch is out. Gandal is up. 
and Gandal is going to hit a fly ball out. It looks like, like to Wilson. Two down and Swede Reisberg up. Again, we don't really have any home run power on this team, so you're not going to have a guy step up that can just, you know, all of a sudden with two outs and nobody on, put your team ahead. These uh, The White Sox are going to have to string hits together to win. Parrish up and looks like he's going to ground out to Collins. And he does. Mike Ivey, who's two for two with a home run today, is up at the plate. And he hits it right up the middle for a and out. All right, they got to it. Reisberg got to it and threw him out, and Enos Cabell's up. And it looks like he's going to ground to Reisberg. And he does. Wilcox back out to the mound, working here in the top of the seventh to Ray Schultz, the catcher. And he's going to ground to Whitaker. Shane O'Collins up. And he's out. And Nemo Liebold, who's two for three with two doubles today. He's been our, uh, he's been our hitting star. But he is going to be out. So we're going to the bottom of the seventh in a tie game at three. And that brings up Lefty Williams. Now Lefty Williams pitching to Chet Lemon, who's up at the plate. And that might be a double for Chet Lemon. And it is. Tom Brookins up, so Williams in a little bit of trouble here. And that looks like he got him out, struck him out, and Trammell up at the plate. We need to get Trammell. Well, we need to get anybody except up out. And uh, he was out. He lined out to Reisberg. And so here it is, left-handed batter against Lefty Williams pitching Lou Whitaker. And that should be a fly out to Jackson. And it is. And we're still tied. Still tied. Eddie Collins up. And Eddie Collins walks. All right, I'm not going to steal, but I will let, I'm going to let Weaver hit. He's a pretty good hitter. Did he get him over? At least get him over. He didn't. Double play. So Jackson's up. Now Jackson has a little bit of power, but still it's not a home run. It's uh, he does have a home run chance, but not a big one. I out to Wilson. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. Now Williams and Wilcox pitching against each other. Glenn Wilson is going to ground it to Gandal, and he's out. Larry Herndon is up. Larry Herndon strikes out. And that brings up Lance Parrish. And Lance Parrish, and he's out. So we're going to the top of the ninth. In a tie game, all tied up. You might have some free baseball, but we'll see. Happy Felsch is up at the plate against Wilcox. And he's going to hit it right up the middle for a base hit. And he does get a base hit, and Gandal's up. Gandal won for three today with a double. And he's out. Line out. Reisberg is up. And Risberg, maybe that's a double. That could be a double for Risberg. Or Risberg, as he might be called. I am going to send him, no doubt. And I'm going to send the trailing runner, too. I'm going to press everything. And it works again. So now we have a 4-3 lead with a man 90 feet away and Ray Schalk up at the plate. And are they going to come out and get Wilcox? They don't. Wilcox is still dealing. That is a shallow fly, it looks like. And uh, yes, it is, and it can't score Risberg. So we're uh, going to Shane O'Collins with two down. Hopefully he can knock in the insurance. 
but he does it. So let's see if Lefty Williams can hammer it down here. He's pitching to Ivy, who has a home run today already. Two for three with a homer. Looks like he's going to ground out, though. One down, Cabell. And Cabell is going to look like he's going to fly out to Jackson, and the Detroit Tigers are down to their last out with Chet Lemon. He is one for three with a double, though. And it looks like he's going to ground out to Collins. No. Yes. All right. They do make the play. And so we will get the box score to show you what happened here. So the White Sox, finally, I actually have a team that I, uh, that I manage that wins a game. So mark that one down. That's pretty historic. Um, we were uh, 8 for 33 at the plate with four RBIs, and the Tigers were 6 for 34 with three RBIs. Both starters went the distance, Lefty Williams going nine and getting the win, allowing six hits and walking nobody and only one earned run. The other two were unearned. For the Tigers, Wilcox went nine. He allowed eight hits and walked three, and all four runs were earned runs. And Mike Ivey had the only home run of the game. Weaver and Wilson had the two errors. So that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed this game, and that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.